Good day, everyone, and welcome to the WANA webinar series. As you will notice, all participants have been muted. If you have a question to ask, please send your questions into the Q&A panel located on the bottom right hand side of your screen and your question will be answered after the presentation. If you have any technical issues, please send a private chat to the host, the directions of which you can find in the chat window. Thank you for joining and please welcome Jack Yatsko from Clubhouse International. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you are in the world. Uh, we're coming to you live from Norway and several parts of the United States, including California, Indiana, and Hawaii. This is the second webinar of the We Are Not Alone webinar series. Last week, we heard from Fountain House in New York about their virtual clubhouse and innovative strategies to stay connected during this pandemic. We know that this is a difficult and challenging time for all of us, but as we talk to clubhouses and coalitions across the globe, we are learning new and exciting ways to maintain and in many instances grow our clubhouses in ways that we've never thought of before. We continue on a weekly basis to provide tips and strategies that we get from clubhouses on our website and email those tips and strategies to clubhouses on a weekly basis. Today, we are excited to have with us a few clubhouse members who are going to share their thoughts, suggestions, and inspirations about keeping a clubhouse strong despite physical distancing. Uh, we have with us today, and wave when I say your name, we have Paula Boyd from Putnam Clubhouse in Con Concord, California. We have Mary Rogers from the Carriage House in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And we have Stina, and I know I'm not gonna say your last name correctly, Stina, so can you please pronounce your last name for us? Yeah, uh, my name is Stina Jardalm. And from the Fountain House from Jövik in Norway. Thank you, Stina. Yeah. So thanks for joining us today, you guys. Um, we appreciate your willingness to share your experience with us. We have a few questions that we're going to ask you today, and then we're going to open it up for questions from our audience. Um, Stina, why don't we just start with you? And the first question we'd like to ask you is, what has been the most helpful thing your clubhouse has done to help you manage during this time? Uh, I think that the meetings, we started pretty soon with the meetings on Zoom uh, and uh, quickly started to work as we have been used to at the house. So we have medium meetings for making the magazine. We have, uh, uh, we are going to be uh, having a accreditation team in December. So we have to work with that. And, uh, one o'clock meetings to talk about what we're going to do. Meetings. Starting to wonder if a sound is. No, that's uh, fine, Steve. No, no, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just uh, using the time to update procedures in the house, but mainly it's keeping the uh, uh, being in connected with each other and talking to each other and. Um, which soon we can see each other and that's been the most helpful, I think, in this time, knowing that we're a team still. Thank you. It sounds like a lot of virtual things are happening with your clubhouse. Um, Paula, why don't we go to you next with the same question? What's been the most helpful thing that your clubhouse has done to help you manage during this time? Thanks, Jack. Um... Well, the things that have been going on within the clubhouse is um, first we created a food bank and um, my work in that has helped me um, go forward. We also have a virtual clubhouse. So our virtual clubhouse includes morning meetings. We have classes like sign language, beginning Spanish. We have our young adults program like we usually do. And we even have outings, which we now call innings. They're virtual tours to places um, locally and all around the world that we watch together. We watch movies together and more. So being able to stay connected has been really important. Um, reaching out to all of our members, letting members know what we're doing and what services we have available. Um, we even have phones that we're providing to members that have had a hard time getting 
online services and access. Um, we're working on a talent show for May 1st. Um, the talent show is We Are Not Alone, Clubhouse Got Talent, the 2020 International Talent Show, and you can be part of it. So just contact us. Um, so meaningful work to do. The regular work of the clubhouse that needs to get done um, so that every day I'm doing something that makes me feel needed, wanted, and expected. That's um, what keeps me going because when I feel like I'm contributing to the clubhouse, I feel like the clubhouse is contributing to me. That's terrific, Paula. Sounds like you guys have a really vibrant community despite the challenges of not having the four walls in the building. I think that phone thing you guys have done too is really cool. Um, if people out there listening aren't aware of, of the phone, uh, piece that Putnam Club Us has done for its members. Let us know and we'll get you a, a tip. You know, we'll give you all the specific details on that from uh, Tamara Hunter, the director of Putnam. All right, thanks, Paula. Let's go to you, Mary, with the same question. Uh, what's the most helpful thing? I mean, both Steena and Paula have listed about 20 different things, but do you have a few things about what the Carriage House has done to help you manage during this time? Well, like the other two, basically keeping schedule. Um, they have teleconference meetings. They have our nine o'clock and one o'clock unit meetings. Um, they have Zoom meetings. We have our committee meetings that we are now teleconferencing to each other between on the same schedule as it was while we were all in the house. And that's what sort of keeps me going is the fact that it's, um, it puts me on a schedule and it doesn't interrupt my normal routine of when I was here and what I'm at now. All right. Thank, thank you, Mary. Yeah. yeah, Zoom and we have um, Discord now going on, which is uh, another um, computer online chat thing that we can talk to when we have when we have anxiety, people can talk in, they can text in, they can talk to other members. And then of course we have Facebook time, Facebook live. We have members who actually read books online or uh, do a cooking show or basically anything they can do from their house. And when they go live and everybody else watches it. That's great, Mary. You know, one cool thing I heard about your clubhouse that I just thought was a really heartfelt sort of thing. We talk about clubhouses is kind of being like a family or second family to members. Can you share with our, our audience the Easter example? Easter. Well, when we first um, had to leave the clubhouse, we ended up making outreach families is what we call them. Every member actually had three or four people that they would uh, commit to calling or contacting daily to outreach. Um, during that time, we came up with the Easter basket. We always have an Easter dinner at the carriage house, and we were all sort of really bummed about not being able to get together and do the whole um, community dinner. So we, I think we ended up over with 200 baskets that we ended up outreaching and delivering on Easter uh, to all the members and, and staff during Easter. I think that's just great. 200 Easter baskets on Easter delivered to each and every member. Uh, Along with a little plant, a little, <laughs> odd, little pansy. So everybody got their own little plant along with an Easter basket. And, actually turned out really good really nice all right thank you um let's move on to our next question you guys and this time maybe paula you can start first um have you found ways yourself to continue to make a a, a meaningful contribution to your clubhouse and or the larger community at this time you want to go first paula yeah thanks jack um so the things I'm doing is um, first I start off with making phone calls to members. 
So we're um, going through our entire membership, phone call by phone call, contacting every single member, no matter how long ago they attended the clubhouse. So I'm talking to people who haven't had a chance to attend in more than 10 years and letting them know we think they're a valuable member. Um, we are letting them know about the program we have online and that we also have care packages that we're delivering out to people. Um, this is an opportunity to reconnect with people that we haven't talked to for a long time. Sometimes we let those people who haven't been for a while slip through the cracks. Um, it's also updating our database, that's for sure, <laughs> and getting new addresses and um, getting new contact numbers where we need to. Um, so that's something that is really important to me, talking to people, hearing their stories, and connecting. Um, I'm also delivering care packages to people. So I'm going out to their homes. I'm wearing my gloves and my face mask, um, but delivering care packages to people who can't get out, who are afraid of getting on public transit right now. Um, so we provide um, a week's worth of food and fresh food as well as sta shelf stable food to help them get through and get by. It's um, something that the members are so grateful for and it's really meaningful for me because I am connecting with people on a more personal level and getting to see people while we stay um, physically distant, we're socially connecting and um, being able to do that is so important. And um, finally, though, I am by no means a tech person. Um, I am connecting with people to help them get online to our virtual program. Um, by going through the steps of using either their phone or their tablet or their computer on how to get onto the um, website and how to connect to our virtual programming, walking them through how to get onto the Zoom connections that we're using and um, getting them reconnected socially. Um, that's been really uh, wonderful to see people who haven't been physically able to attend um, perhaps they've had some kind of anxiety about getting out, um, getting them connected anyway so that we can see them and get connected with them has been really important. And um, I even use Facebook to connect with people. Um, I'm building a great line of friends from all over the place so that I can hear what's happening in other clubhouses. Uh, they can hear what's happening with us. And um, I hear what's going on with people's lives. Um, that's been really a nice um, benefit for me because it helps me stay connected socially, even though I have to be physically separated. It sounds like you're becoming a tech guru yourself, Paula. <laughs> but just um, two quick questions from what you just said. It sounds like Putnam Clubhouse is reaching out to not only active but inactive members uh, based on what you said. Is that correct? Yes. So inactive members, um, it doesn't matter how long ago, whether they stopped attending two years ago or 12 years ago, we're still contacting them. The second question, it, uh, we've heard from a lot of clubhouses, typically all clubhouses will have members and, and staff to reach out calls when you're in the clubhouse. And yet you spoke a lot to members making calls to members. And sometimes we've heard of some clubhouses where staff are doing the majority of that. Can you tell us how you operationalize that? How did you div divide it up and, and make it happen? Sure. Well, we started off just for no other reason. We divided things up geographically. So um, staff have phone calls to make and members have phone calls to make and we have geographic areas that we're doing. But we also have some other divisions. For example, I have an entire list I'm going through where we don't have current phone, uh, excuse me, we don't have current addresses for people. So those tend to be the older ones um, and getting in touch with them, um, trying to get a current um, cell number um, trying to get a current residence if we have them, and um, they're very welcoming to the phone calls. 
It's great to hear. Well, thank you, Paula, for sharing. Um, Mary, why don't we come to you next with that same question? Have you found ways individually to make important contributions to your community or the larger clubhouse com community or coalition? Well, like uh, my friend Paula here, uh, I do a lot of driving, do a lot of community service. Um, we provide lunches for people who are grocery, don't have a whole lot of groceries. I also go pick up groceries as well as take people to go grocery shopping when they need it. Um, public transportation, like Paula had said, sort of some are really leery about entering on. Um, we do, like I said, we do lunches, we do the care packages. Uh, it just getting out and of course the outreach. I have my list, the staff has their list, they split of course. We're also doing the inactive as well. Uh, if they haven't been here for a while, you know, send them a, if we have a correct address for them, we send them a care package. And I'm normally delivering those. Um, and again, like Paula, I'm using my gloves and I'm using my mask and everything. So, um, but it gets me out and it gets me to help the community to stay together. How many days a week are you doing that? Five. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty much on a, on a call basis. Okay. Somebody to take lunch to somebody or uh, go grocery shopping. I, that's what I'm, what I'm there for. So your reach out families kind of divvy those up and then connect individually with members and right. get lists from them and then do the shopping, delivering, or even take people to the grocery store. Well, we're doing a lot of uh, like Kroger click lists. Uh, Walmart is now doing everything online. All you got to do is go pick it up. Um, we're doing a lot of that now. Uh, instead of putting people in vehicles, we're actually just going to pick up the groceries and then bringing them back to them. Any members have struggles with getting their meds? Uh, I have not heard of any troubles getting meds. Um, that is also another community support that we, we will do if needed, if they need to go and get them or if they need them picked up somewhere. Um, yesterday, uh, we had a uh, member that needed some parts for his machine that he, uh, his respiratory machine. So I went and picked up the parts and brought it back to him because they're not allowed to leave the apartment. So, but yeah. Sounds like just, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes. All right, Stina, would you like to add anything to that? You know, any uh ways that you continue to make a meaningful contribution or in the larger uh arena within your coalition or larger clubhouse community thank you uh first of all i would just like to say how impressed i am by both mary and paula that's amazing work you do uh but uh we also use the discord uh we started discord uh discord is basically a social platform for gamers uh, but you can use it to so much more. And uh, about two weeks before this, uh, before basically Norway shut down, uh, we started this and wanted to uh, open up to every member and staff in every clubhouse in Norway so we could talk together. And uh, so we sent out mails and tried to spread the word. And uh, yeah, it didn't happen. Uh, um, mostly came after Norway got shut down, but uh, it's been such an amazing uh, place. It, we can talk together across the houses, we get to uh, get to know each other across the houses and share tips and like get this, it's, uh, I'm sorry, the English is a bit, um, we, get to connect across the houses and we feel like we're all part of the same uh, community and uh, take care of each other and uh, i personally gotten to know a couple of people we basically talk every day and 
uh, getting new friends out of this was not uh, what I was thinking going to happen. But uh, so many have uh, sent, uh, uh, told us that they really appreciate this Discord group and that we can, they have someone to talk to in this lonely time. I think you, the great irony of that, Stina, I think, is that most people would think on the surface that folks would be isolating and more lonely, and that you make a profound point there, that you've made new friends that you otherwise didn't have, not only within your own clubhouse, but other Norwegian clubhouses. Um, can you let our audience know about how many clubhouses you have in Norway? Because we're, Norway is just like the fastest growing country of clubhouses right now. So how about how many are you guys communicating with? Uh, right now we have 14 houses in Norway, uh, but two on the way, and we have 12 houses on Discord. And uh, I to some other uh, Nor uh, Scandinavian houses, so we've gotten in someone from both Sweden, Denmark and uh, Finland. And we actually have our first member from uh, the USA. So, uh, um, that was the idea I was talking to the other guys who have been doing this with me. And we're like, yeah, more the merrier. Uh, we will open up to the entire world. Uh, everybody who wants to join us, both by members and staff. And yeah, sometimes other people outside this uh, and join. Um, this is not the time to uh, exclude anyone and um, I think uh, I can talk uh, I personally struggle with missing uh, something that makes it hard to leave the house and this has made it really easy for me to socialize uh, and I think this can help people be social even if they can't come to the clubhouse that day or just have someone to talk to because a lot of people struggle with this so uh, we are going to continue this as, as long as we have people coming <laughs> it's, uh, on the channel. So, Well, the key theme that you and Mary and Paul have all kind of discussed so far is the engagement of members in all the activities of the clubhouse that you're each doing. And I think that's um, an important message for everybody to take in today that just as when we have the operations open that members need to be included in, in, in those activities despite the physical limitations. Um, let me go, um, let's go to another uh, question that we had before we open it up to um, our audience for questions. And Mary, maybe we can start with you this time. Just some final, any tips, strategies, suggestions that you can offer to other clubhouse members around the world to maybe inspire and help them navigate during this difficult time. Do you have any gold nuggets besides what you've said so far? The thing that helps me the most is keeping a schedule. Um, the clubhouse is, you know, they're doing their, if they have an education meeting before they uh, close down at Tuesday at 11 o'clock, then they have a teleconference meeting at that time. Um, I am currently in a, a bunch of these committees, so that was my routine before we shut down, and it helps that they have that routine now. Um, we also have our friends of the face or friends of the carriage house Facebook page that we uh, post our Facebook live interviews on. You know, just to get out and say hi, you know, go live on Facebook and say hi to somebody else. Uh, our outreach program is amazing. We've probably got members calling anywhere from three to 10 people daily just to make sure that they're got everything they need. They're okay. They're making it through and they're not getting um, depressed at this time. So, you know, there, there's somebody that cares about them. So outreach to me is is the most important thing right now. 
It sounds like too that when you said routine, having that structure and schedule is a key piece for you. And I think that's where um, it reminds me to remind you, all of you out there, that next week's webinar series is going to be on the work order day. We're going to have Genesis Club sharing all kinds of ideas on how to structure a strong work order day virtually, mobily. You've heard some tips from these guys today, but that key essence, uh, Mary, of having structure, having meaning, meaningful purpose during the day right. and creating that with your clubhouse sounds like a really valuable um, suggestion for other clubhouses. Yeah, I mean, as long as they have that, then they have the community. I mean, as long as they have outreach, then the community is, is together. All right, thank you. Stina, what about you? Any final tips, suggestions, strategies um, to help other clubhouse members? Uh, I've been using, I married the schedules and routines are very important to me as well uh, but uh, like see this as an opportunity to do something new a uh, new hobby a new maybe a new language uh, read all the books that you haven't been able to read for a while and uh, what I loved with this and that I love with uh, this is people get so creative like under this time, people, opera singers are having concerts on their balcony and and just look for uh, the beauty in it and look for uh, positive things that comes out of this. Because uh, if you watch the news, it's just uh, the crisis. And of course, that's part of it, but there's so much more than that. So that's helped me a lot to just look for the silver lining, sort of. I, I heard of one club I said uh, they do a radio show. And so members will call in and, and, and make their requests and they run this radio show. And they also have a band. So they have like, you know, the five people in the band playing in their basements or their living rooms and they, they take requests. And so, again, like you said, it's being creative and thinking of ways to uh, create engagement with it with people. Um, Paula, so let's. Go ahead. Yeah, that's amazing. I need to get that link so I can hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it to you. Um, Vail Place in Minnesota is the one doing the radio show. Uh, Paula, uh, final tips, suggestions, words of inspiration for others? Well, here's what I do. First, um, you have to be active. So don't isolate. Get out. Take walks. Um, really step up your self-care. Because, well, we're going through physical distancing, um, we don't want to do social distancing. So make phone calls to people. If you haven't talked to someone for a while, don't feel like, oh, I haven't talked to them for a while, so I can't make a phone call. Go ahead and make that phone call. Just check in. I was thinking about you. Um, do meditation or yoga. Um, if your clubhouse doesn't have a meditation or yoga program, um, get on YouTube. Do something. Um, next, um, get involved. Um, getting involved makes a big difference. So making phone calls. You may not make outreach phone calls um, to old time members. Um, and we, I have my group that I call every week. I have the same list. I check in with them every week. Um, but you can do some kind of outreach to people, even if it's calling people on their birthdays or talking them into joining a meeting. Um, reaching out to potential new members. We've got online membership. Um, join the online movie time. Make cracks about the movie while you're <laughs> watching the movie together. So if your clubhouse isn't doing something that you've heard about, you're interested in, volunteer to help get it going. Um, be part of that um, activity. And really, though I'm not an artist, I have a hobby. You can too. So I cleaned off my desk, dusted off my gel pens, and I restarted my art. So um, now I'm doing um, my drawing that I have done. And um, I also created a postcard for the clubhouse that we are sending out to people. So it could simply be writing postcards to people at home. Um, find a way to stay involved and stay active. 
What's your shirt? Your shirt <laughs> looks like you created a shirt too. Yeah, we created this just for today. Virtual Clubhouse called PutnamClubhouse.org, O-R-G. And um, you could be part of that talent show that we're scheduling for March 1st. We're looking for talent, Jack. Jack, <laughs> talent. Um, we've got everything from singers to magicians, um, all kinds of different talent. We're looking for people from all over the world to get involved in this uh, program. We're going to be broadcasting it all over. And we hope to have people like you um, involved so that we can have the best talent show ever. So Clubhouse International Talent Show 2020. I'll, I'll mention that to Joel Corcoran um, for his creativity in that regard. Uh, makes me think of get Andy Wilson from the Carriage House. He does wonderful magic uh, as a magician tricks. with card tricks. A um, oh, couple other things, Paula, that you mentioned enrollment. I think that's an important piece too. Um, members being a new members being able to still join the clubhouse during this period where so many agencies and, and people from the outside think the clubhouses are closed they're not operating um you all three of your clubhouses are not only operating but also enrolling new members correct yes and we decided to cut through the paperwork so we have virtual membership and we're just getting people that are um, self-referring right now and they'll have virtual membership. We go through an orientation with them. And then um, when we reopen physically, we'll have them go through the regular orientation. That's fantastic. Yeah, I've heard some cool things how um, new members can take like a virtual tour of the clubhouse through somebody walking through. Um, and you can email them the, the membership forms, newsletters, things like that. So it's a way to still keep things operationalized. And I think like um, you said earlier, Christina, reducing that isolation. Here's somebody who's just hearing about the clubhouse. And what better way during this crisis when so many people are home alone to engage, you know, with your with your communities. Last thing, Paula, as an animal lover, I heard about this Furry Friday uh, activity that you guys do. Can you just quickly share what that is? Yeah, so we get on, um, we use primarily Zoom and we get online with each other. We still have our TGI Fridays and we decided to have Furry Friday where people bring their pets online with them and uh, we just share about each other's pets and it's uh, staff as well as the membership just um, enjoy each other's pets and uh, we talk about them. So it's just a lot of fun, a little something different. We try to do something different for all of our TGI Fridays, although we did have a karaoke dance party as well. <laughs> all right, thank you. We've been trying to reach out to uh, clubhouses and coalitions across the globe. I think in the last month we've, um, been in touch with over 280 clubhouses with over 600 people. And it's funny watching people's cats kind of crawl behind them or <laughs> dogs barking. And you guys just came right out that we're going to feature our pets. And so I thought that was kind of a creative thing as well. Right. Well, right. let's, um, we do have some people who want to ask some questions. So why don't, um, if you guys can stay in the line with us a little while longer, we'll go back to Jody and Jessica to help us out with the questions. And then we'll maybe take some turns trying to answer them. Thank you, Jack. For those of you that have a question that they would like to ask, please submit your questions and comments in the Q&A panel located in the bottom right-hand side of your screen. So Jack, we'll go ahead and get started with the first question. Who is making the lunches that you deliver? Mary, you wanna go first on that one? Actually, our staff is doing that. Uh, we have a limited staff at the carriage house to where uh, there's a few of them that are specifically for lunches and the care packages together, and then uh, volunteers to deliver those. What about you, Paula? How do you get? How are you guys operationalizing that? Well, we have a couple of ways. One is a donation that was made by the California version of AAA. They're providing a um, hundred lunches to us every day. And we're getting those out to people, but our hospitality staff, both, both members and staff are creating wonderful lunches that are getting out to people and um, they're doing a variety of things. And we even have vegetarian options at times. Great. 
Stina, do you have anything else to add to that? Are your clubhouse do, doing lunches or do you know of other Norwegian ones who are? Uh, we are doing it, but uh, the house in Kongsberg is uh, delivering food every day, so almost, I think, uh, and making this uh, yeah, lunch stuff that people can come to the window and receive from uh, the staff. Oh, so people, so people can come to the clubhouse and there's people inside the clubhouse making lunch and they pass them through a window or a door to people like to go lunches. Yeah. yeah. Members are, yeah. Members can come and get the food. So, uh... All right. Thank you. Next, next question. Thank you. Wondering from a confidentiality HIPAA standpoint, how is it possible for clubhouses to give out members phone numbers to other members? I don't know that HIPAA is a big deal for you, Stina, um, in, in Norway, but uh, Paula or Mary, do you have any comments about that? Yeah, uh, we actually have, the staff normally calls other people. When we ended up making our outreach families, uh, they were basically people that we already knew. Um, People like myself, uh, I don't think there's a member and doesn't have my phone number. So for some reason or another. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the staff will call and they actually ask them, you know, would you like to have an outreach call? You know, we're gonna give you to this family over here. They'll give you a call. And, and we, we sort of go around that. Let me just define for people out there who don't know what HIPAA is. HIPAA is like a, a confidentiality sort of rule in the, in, the, in the United States. I'm not sure if it, it's in other countries, but um, by and large, a lot of clubhouses will have members sign releases of information. And so in that list will be, we're allowed to put your name in the newsletter, allowed to share it for reach out calls. So even when we're operating like we normally do, generally when a clubhouse member joins the clubhouse, they'll sign kind of a, a broader release of information, enabling people to, like you can have my phone number or I'm not allowing that to be out there or my email address. Um, Paula, do you have things to add to that? No, I think that about covers it, Jack, that um, we don't, um, our database is set up so there is no um, pertinent um, medical information available to members, but address and phone number is available um, and that is not considered part of HIPAA violation. Um, just to contact someone by phone because we have to access at any time, we have to be able to get a hold of members. And since we work side by side, um we consider that as accessible information and all of our members do sign releases of information they're aware when they sign in that this is information that is available if anybody out there who's listening um has a re feel like you have a really good standard release of information form um roi uh please send that to us and we'll be glad to send that out if uh some clubhouses are struggling in that area with you know, making that connection. Obviously, with all three of your clubhouses, what a key ingredient. We do this every day with members calling members, staff calling members, and you're extended that out into your communities. And I think that's vital for clubhouses to be able to do that. And it also creates meaningful work. You guys have all described that as something that, that provides some purpose and structure and routine to your days. And I think many other clubhouses could benefit from not only having staff do that, but members doing that because of the, the relationships people have with each other. Yeah. Can we go to another question? Certainly. Is there work you normally do in your clubhouse that you have been able to maintain during this time? Has there been work that you have normally do that you've been able to maintain during this time? Is that correct? Correct. In the clubhouse. 
Well, that's uh, kind of a tough one for me because a lot of what I do is fundraising <laughs> and our fundraising is changing dramatically. But um, we still have our fundraisers, our two big fundraisers that we work on every year. We're just changing the um, out the outcome. So instead of a 500 person gala, we're going to be having a um, virtual gala and um, the work on that goes forward anyway. We're still going to be seeking out in kind donations and um, sponsorships. That kind of work goes forward. Um, we have databases that have to be updated every day with attendance. Um, virtual attendance is recorded. So we've got members working on um, doing the uh, data entry on a regular basis. And we're able to do that from home as well as within the clubhouse. And um, we have hospitality working on making meals. Great. Mary or Stina, do you have anything to add to that? Normally on the, uh, I do our monthly newsletter and I can do that at home. Uh, normally we're actually coming up with ways to where we can get um, the normal work day done, the clerical work and the, the banking and things like that done um, with basically only the staff at the carriage house. So we're, we're, we're coming up with some ways to get that done now. Um, and hopefully we'll move forward with that in the near future. So. Okay. Stina, do you have anything else to add to that? Uh, yeah, we're doing sort of the same. We're making a magazine uh, so we can continue writing the article at home and work on Zoom. Uh, actually, before today, we were working on a piece uh, that a member had written and we can write it together. Uh, and we are, as I said, getting a hopefully accredited in December. So we're working with the self-study uh, on Zoom. Uh, and um, yeah, there's probably something else, but I can't remember. Well, I think um, <laughs> the to add to that, uh, to help answer that question, um, two things. One, our webinar next week is going to focus solely on the work order day and activities in that regard. But I think of AM morning and afternoon unit meetings. Um, many clubhouses are doing those. I think you mentioned, Stina, that doing your newsletter and somebody working on a daily newsletter or a monthly newsletter from home, birthday cards for members, wellness related activities. I think, Paula, you alluded to this earlier. A lot of clubhouses are going on wellness walks and using their phones to show where they're at and, and their neighborhoods or parks um, and things of that nature. Uh, folks mentioned some other wellness related activities. Um, a social program, you guys mentioned a lot of ideas along that for structure. Uh, I know of a couple of clubhouses where a member who likes to cook at the clubhouse is either the clubhouse has bought the groceries so they can make the meal at their clubhouse and then they pick it up and deliver it to other members or a dessert. Uh, that member might like to bake at home. Um, and you mentioned the fundraising. A lot of clubhouses have member banks and still continue with those banking activities. So I think my advice would be to look at your existing structure that you do at your clubhouse. And what are those things that with which without the building are absolutely not doable, but what are? I, I think the what are's are much higher and, and can be done with some creativity as Dina, Mary, and Paula have described than the what nots are. And so again, um, hope those are some ideas. Um, why don't we, I think maybe we can take one more question. Sure, we have two more questions actually for you. Here's your next one. How can staff continue to engage members virtually, particularly in terms of making sure each member has access to work of the clubhouse? For example, you mentioned Discord. Do you want to start with that, Stina, and maybe elaborate on Discord? Uh, uh, the group uh, channel we are, uh, have is most, uh, mostly for the socializing. Uh, socializing. But uh, I know Kongsberg uh, House in Norway is actually using Discord to have their daily meetings and to work on pieces and uh, yeah. 
but I think yeah, mostly we've been using Zoom to uh, that the staff has been helping with, and also being able to borrow a computer uh, if you don't have that access at home. Mary or Paula, would you like to add to that? The uh, question is how can staff continue to engage members virtually, particularly in terms of making sure members have access to the work of the clubhouse? Sure, first, let me say that one of the things um, that I didn't mention before was our education employment department, that staff is engaging people um, with education employment. So, um, we have two, we've had two um, scholarships that have gone out to people virtually and um, we're helping members um, in the past. Our primary focus was helping members with employment opportunities and now it's with um, unemployment um, problems that staff is engaging members in getting help that way. So um, staff has been doing things like doing nighttime reach out. Uh, so we have a program called Friends at Dusk where staff has been um, providing an opportunity for socialization in the challenging hours from 7 to 9 p.m. Um, staff has been working with members to do that side-by-side -side, um, data entry, and um, that's been important to keep people engaged. Um, working on the regular daily tasks that need to get done within the clubhouse and finding creative ways to get it done virtually, whether it's over the phone or through Zoom. But a lot of the day to day work is, um, frankly, done over the phone and um, getting engaged with people so that they can continue to do the work of the clubhouse. That's been really important. Um, we have one staff member that constantly takes her dog on a walk and brings members with her virtually. So um, it, it's coming up with creative ways. Anything to add to that, Mary? Well, I do know that um, when we give out the gift bags, we continue our outreach because when we give out gift bags, we normally put in three, maybe four uh, postcards or cards with stamped envelopes to where the person receiving the gift bag can send out, you know, four or five cards to other members in the, in the, in the clubhouse. Um, and again, our meetings, uh, in fact, I'm on Speakers Bureau, and we actually have a Speakers Bureau uh, event coming up next week, so we're still engaged in it. Uh, we have the education and the uh, employment meetings, community meeting or committee meetings, as well as the clerical meetings and food service meetings. We try to help everybody get engaged in in that work order. So, I think too, Teresa, um, so many clubhouses have Facebook pages now and they, they, they put out their schedules. So I would encourage you to just, that's one activity members can do is to do a search on all the different Facebook pages that clubhouses have. Our tips and strategies documents that we're sending out each week encompasses many great ideas on how clubhouses are maintaining structure and engaging members in work. I know of two really just, this is in the last week or so, Pathways Clubhouse in Canada had an annual fundraising luncheon and rather ca than canceling that fundraising luncheon, they hosted it virtually. And so Dave McDonald at Pathways Clubhouse in Canada can give you more information on that. Also Genesis House in Michigan, Mike Leahy would be the contact there, had uh, a 5K run scheduled and they did it virtually. So if you wanna learn how they still did that fundraiser, that involved work uh, within the clubhouse and engaging members in the structure and organization of that activity as well. Uh, so, uh, and again, that, that again is an encouragement to join next week's webinar uh, where Genesis Club will be focusing specifically on the work order day and the structure around it with engaging members in the day-to-day -day activities. Do we have one more time for one more question? We do, Jack, thank you. So do you have any advice you can share regarding safely reopening clubhouses? 
And what would you like to see happening in the larger community before we can think of reopening? Stina, do you want to start off on that one? Do you have any comments or ideas about safely reopening? Yeah, that's a hard one. Um, I know that the situation is so differently from country to country, so it's hard to give one exact advice for everyone. Uh, but we're uh, here in Norway, we are uh, opening kindergarten this week and like uh, some uh, your children are coming back to school from Monday. So we're talking about slowly opening up uh, the house again. And we, we just have to listen to the government and to the doctors and stuff like that who tells us what we should do. But I know some houses here in Norway have uh, are going to open soon. And then it's just uh, like from five to 10 people a day maximum. And you have to uh, be careful with keeping distance and washing of hands, of course. And um, yeah, we have to, I think we have to be prepared for living like this for yeah, some months more, at least just keeping distance and being careful what we touch and yeah, becoming more comfortable with the virtual work. Mary, you want to go next? Um, we actually talked about this. We had a philosophy policy meeting uh, teleconference just yesterday. And one of the policies or one of the items that we were topics we were talking about was how are we going to reopen when we are able to. Um, there was a lot of suggestions as far as, of course, we'll listen to the government, you know, when they start opening up uh, businesses and schools and stuff. I do understand, I believe, Indiana uh, school's not going to open up this year. They're going to at least wait till next year. They said no more school for this particular school year. Um, However, uh, hopefully coming summer when uh, last thing I knew they were opening May 1st. That's when he's lifting the ban. Uh, if that happens, there's a possibility of still wearing masks and, you know, checking temperatures when they come into the clubhouse. But slowly but surely when we enter, we're, we're going to do it hopefully safely and to where we don't transmit anything to either ourselves or outside the clubhouse. Anything to add to that, Paula? Well, California tends to be very conservative in this and it will um, depend primarily on what the governor um, says. As everyone said, it's going to be the government that leads that. I think that testing will have um, a key to all of this. And when we have tests available so that we can feel more safe uh, gathering. But as uh, Mary and Stina said, uh, the precautions that we take will probably continue for some time. Right now, when we uh, do work and we happen to be physically in the clubhouse, um, right now, we do wear masks, um, we wash our hands constantly, and we're wiping down everything constantly. I think, too, we will at Clubhouse International continue to gather best practices as we learn them. We're sort of learning through our video conferences at many of the Asian clubhouses in uh, Japan, China, Korea, Taiwan. Um, they're a little bit ahead of the curve than the rest of the world as far as um, when the virus hit. And they do have, they're planning their reopening. So we're in, in conversations with those clubhouses to see what they're doing. And then some of them are, are planning to do what some of you guys had mentioned, temperature checks, limiting the amount of people that can initially come, whether they, they do that by geography or alphabet order or whatever ways they're gonna do it, we'll learn more from them. Physical distancing, like how we all sit together at, at our dining tables for lunch, being further apart and some of the other things you guys had mentioned with masks, gloves, things of that nature. But we'll continue to gather ideas on that. I think 
most of the world is not yet there, but we're all sort of thinking, hoping um, we can get there as soon as possible. And we'll continue to pass along what we learned from, from others um, with our tips and strategies documents. Uh, Jessica, um, should I just wind, wind up right now or? That would be wonderful, thank you. All right, so you guys, thank you, first of all, everybody who came to this webinar. We really appreciate you taking time out of your day to, to join Paula, Mary, Stina, and I to hopefully you got some good ideas uh, from these guys about uh, members contributing into the in the community and what they're they're gaining from this experience. I also want to um, thank Paula, Mary, and, and Stina for you guys just doing a lot of homework and and putting together uh, valuable time and energy to share with us what you're doing. Want to, we want to give a big shout out to Putnam Clubhouse in Concord, California, the Carriage House in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And Fountain Husik Jorvik in Norway, uh, you guys are doing great stuff. And uh, remember, you guys, we are all in this together, and we are not alone. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you, everyone. If we have not answered your questions, please feel free to send an email to wanawebinars at fountainhouse.org. The recording will be available next week, and the slides will be distributed tomorrow. Thank you for coming to the webinar and please be on the lookout for announcements regarding our future webinars. Have a great day.